grading an assignment in Blackboard. We're going to cover a lot of ground in this video about assignments. Here are the main topics that we'll discuss. The difference between needs grading versus the full grade center. How late assignments are flagged for both faculty and students. How to use the annotate tool when you are giving students feedback. How to download submitted papers from your students to your computer. How to enter an assignment grade how to grade and manage various attempts submitted by students, and using the options in grade details. All Connecticut Community College faculty are enrolled in the resource course, Course Design and Delivery Competencies, self-paced. It will display in your Blackboard course list in the section labeled Courses Where You Are a Student. If you do not see the course, contact your local EdTech director. We recommend that you review the information and videos in the course about tools that are typically used with assignments, such as SafeAssign, Rubrics, and the Blackboard Annotate tool. There are also videos available for students at the URL shown here on how to submit an assignment, check their grades, etc. In a different video in this channel, I demonstrated how to create a new assignment in Blackboard. In this video, I will demonstrate how to grade an assignment attempt that has been submitted by a student. I'll also show you how the submitted assignment displays in needs grading and provide some tips on how to check or manage the student's grades in Grade Center. In this channel, there's also a short video showing instructors how students submit an assignment. The video shows you the student's perspective by using the Student Preview tool, which enables you to interact with your course exactly as a real student does. We recommend that you watch the video to learn how your students will interact with your assignments. Grading a student's assignment attempt using Full Grade Center versus Needs Grading. I've logged into Blackboard and notice at the top right here that I am already in edit mode so I can make changes to the course. To grade students' assignment attempts, I scroll down below the course menu to the control panel and then I select Grade Center. It's perfectly all right to select full grade center, and grades submitted attempts from there. For example, I can scroll over to the grade column that I wish to grade, select the student submission attempt that I wish to grade, and it will open right up so that I can proceed with the grading process. However, in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use needs grading because needs grading provides some options that make it easy to grade only the assessments that you wish to grade at that moment. For example, I can filter students' attempts by category, item, individual users, or date submitted. I'll select assignment as the category and click go and now only the assignment submissions will display. If a student submitted their assignment past the due date, it will be marked late in needs grading. This will also be displayed when you open the actual attempt to be graded. You can see over to the right, the attempt is labeled as being late next to the field where you'll enter the points awarded. Your students will also see when an attempt that they have submitted is late. Now I have opened an attempt in needs grading. In this case, I selected a submitted assignment attempt from my preview student. Because the student followed the instructions and submitted their paper as an attachment that is compatible with the Blackboard Annotate tool, the paper automatically is displayed in my web browser. Now I'll use the tools in Blackboard Annotate to add comments and other types of feedback to the student's submission. Check the video on how to use Blackboard Annotate for more information. Or instead of using Annotate to add comments and feedback, you could download the student's paper to your own computer and then open it in Microsoft Word, click the Review tab, and use Microsoft Word's Track Changes tools to add your feedback and comments there. Then you would just save the document to your own computer, name the file so that you know which student it is and which assignment attempt it was related to, and save it. 
Now go back to Blackboard and click the little down arrow in the blue bar below the points entry field. Here you can let your students know what type of feedback you've added and where they can find it. If you wish, you can attach the document that you had saved earlier. To attach an offline Word document that contains comments, click the plus icon and select Insert Local Files from the Add Content dialog box that will display. Navigate to the file you created on your computer, select the file, and click Open. The file will appear as a link in your feedback text. These other two icons down here allow you to launch the spell checker or launch the full content editor. Here's where you can enter your grade, then click Submit. Up at the top, you'll get a confirmation that the grade was submitted. You have successfully graded a student attempt. Either the next attempt will display or you'll be brought back to the needs grading window. Managing attempts in full Grade Center. Now I want to show you a few important things in the full Grade Center. In the video on how to create an assignment, I mentioned that when you create a new assignment, a grade column for it is automatically created in Grade Center. And you can always find the new automatically created grade column all the way over to the right. As I mentioned in the video on creating assignments, in the Grade Center, instructors see the primary display and the secondary display. Instructors see the secondary display in parentheses to the right of the primary display. Students see only the primary display when they look at my grades. Setting secondary display to percentage can help you troubleshoot grading issues. Grade column heading options. If you are new to using Grade Center and assignments, then the other thing that you'll definitely want to check out is the options that are available to you if you click the drop down next to an assignment grade column heading. These are all functions that are specifically related to assignments. So, for example, you could click Grade Attempts and it will take you to Needs Grading to grade every single attempt in order. You could grade with the usernames hidden. You could download in one click all documents attached to the assignments that your students submitted. It will come down as a zip file, you'll extract it, and then you can read them all offline if you prefer to use words commenting and editing options. You could also change the due date of the assignment, edit column information, and many other things. Understanding Grade Center icons. Here's a quick tip when you're working in Grade Center. If you ever see an icon displayed and you don't know what the icon means, just click the little icon legend button at the bottom right and all of the icons used in Grade Center and their definitions will be displayed there. Modify or exempt attempt grades. If I go into Grade Center and I look at this particular assignment, I can see that I have a student who has already submitted an attempt. And if I wanted to go and look at that attempt, which I have already graded, I would click the little drop down in the cell and open the attempt. And from here, I could actually review the attempt. And if I felt like changing the attempt grade for whatever reason, one place that I could change it would be right here. So I've changed the grade to 98. And a good idea would be to go down and click the Add Notes link. Whenever you change a grade, this allows you to add some grading notes that you can then see in grade details. And now I'm going to come down here and submit. Now I want to go back to Grade Center. The fastest way to do this is to come up to the top here and click the Grade Center link, which is called a breadcrumb, to go directly back to the full Grade Center tool. I can see that the grade for the Chapter 1 through 3 assignment has been changed. If I click the drop down, I see a few other options. If I wanted to, I could exempt the grade for this entire assignment altogether. And when you do that, you get a little gray circle, and if you mouse over it, it says grade exempted for this user, meaning this grade is not going to count at all towards this student's final grade calculations. To change that back, I just click the drop down and select clear exemption. Options in grade details. 
The other thing that I could do is click View Grade Details. This is a very important option. You'll use it a lot. If I click View Grade Details, I have a variety of different information on this page. If we look up at the top here also, we see another way to exempt the grade and a button that will allow us to see all submitted attempts from this student. Also notice that up at the top, it will tell you what the final grade is based on. In this case, it's based on the last graded attempt, and that makes sense because this is an assignment that only allowed students one attempt. Whenever an assignment is created, or any grade column, if you look in Edit Column Information, you will see that Last Graded Attempt is the default value that is always assigned as the grade value that will be used for final grade calculations. However, it's always a best practice to change this to Highest Grade if there are going to be multiple attempts allowed. How to give a student additional assignment attempts by using the options to Clear Attempt ignore attempt, or allow additional attempts. What if you wanted to give a particular student an additional attempt? Maybe you found out that the student had some sort of family emergency and you decide that you want to give them another attempt. There are three different ways that you can do that. One way is to clear the attempt. We strongly recommend that you do not use this option. Many faculty do not realize that by clicking clear attempt, which does give the students another chance to submit an attempt, they're actually deleting this attempt and it cannot be restored. You would be surprised at how often this is done in error. The other thing that you could do is click ignore attempt. Now, ignoring attempt is actually a good option because it ensures that for the purposes of calculating the final grade, any grade assigned to this attempt will be completely ignored. And when the student submits another attempt and you grade that attempt, that will be the attempt that is used in grade calculations. I can undo that by clicking Do Not Ignore Attempt. There's another option. You can click Allow Additional Attempt. You will only see the Allow Additional Attempt button if the student has already submitted the maximum number of attempts that are allowed for the assignment. So if only one attempt was allowed, you will see the Allow Additional Attempt button. If you had allowed multiple attempts for this assignment, perhaps you were allowing students two or three attempts, this button will not even display to you until the student has submitted the maximum number of attempts. Now, if you click Allow Additional Attempts, click the OK button to confirm, the original attempt will remain and the student will now be given another attempt and you need to inform the student that they have another attempt available. Assigning an override grade. If I wanted to, I could override this grade by clicking the second tab. An override grade means that once you enter this grade, the override grade, let's say that I decided to change it to 100, for example, even if the student is allowed additional attempts, no other grade that's assigned to future attempts will change this grade. So I could give the student some feedback if I wanted to, but notice that when I click Save after changing this grade using the override grade option, and if I go back to Grade Center, I can tell that this is an override grade because override grades always have this little yellow triangle or a yellow caret in the upper left corner. Now let's say I change my mind about that and I want the attempt itself to actually count in the grade. I can easily go back and remove that by clicking the drop down, going to View Grade Details, and then I would click Revert. I click OK to confirm that I want to revert the grade. And now this grade is going to go back to what the attempt was graded. Viewing Grade History. If I click on the Grade History tab, I can see every change that I've made. If you see a little tab here that says View Complete History, click that. Everything is recorded here, and you'll notice that here is the grading note that I put in there. If you require additional assistance or have questions, contact your local college's EdTech Director.